Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes of Fame. Tonight's guests, we have a master choreographer, teacher, coach, Miss Krista King Doherty from New Mexico. Welcome to the show. Oh, Thank you. The Thank you so much, Don. <laughs> and the I wish. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm so honored to be here with you. I've been looking forward to this and chatting with you. So hi everyone. Hi Don. Thank you so much. She <laughs> major. I stalked you forever to get this interview. <laughs> Guys, oh my gosh, I, I think I've been looking forward to this for like a year, right? Yay, or almost. So excited. Thank you. You're brilliant. <laughs> Let me just say that. Oh my I've watched goodness. you. Um, and I just, I just wish I could just get into your head. And that's why we're here, because I want to pretty much figure out what goes on in that brain. I don't think you want to go in there. <laughs> it's a little bit kooky. <laughs> so welcome. To Ask my husband. Crazy. <laughs> The New Mexico. Well, we're going to figure out, we're going to go into all of that, yeah. how you got there. Okay, cool. All of that. But the first question I always ask my guest, who is? So who is Miss Krista? And go. Miss Krista. Um, well, first, first and foremost, I would say I'm a mother. Mother, um, I'm a wife, a friend, a daughter. Uh, I would say I'm a traveler, for sure, and an educator a dance coach, and an advocate for young people. Oh, wonderful. How many children <laughs> do you have? I have three. I have three girls. Oh, three, have three girls. Yeah. You don't have to have. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. They've, they've, they all have gone <laughs> the gamut. They've grew up in the dance studio. I don't think they had much of a choice. Our family okay. you know, has a dance studio, so we can get into all of that. But yeah, they definitely all grew up dancing. And so they have that whenever they would like it, um, you know, to use, which I think is wonderful for anyone growing up that way. And of course, Juliet has stuck with it and is a actress and a performer. So, okay. yeah. Seeing her, she's gorgeous too. Her work is- Thank you so much. <laughs> so you yeah. You grew up in the studio as well. So let's talk about your formative training years. So how did that all happen? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, my grandparents actually danced together. Uh, my grandpa was, a, I won't go into this too, too far, but it's kind of, I mean, for me, it's kind of cool, but he was a doctor and um, they had a chance to move to New Mexico and he was a doctor during the war. They grew up dancing together. So my grandmother for um, income started a small little dance studio. So actually that was in 1945. So our dance studio is still in New Mexico going strong. This is a 76th year, 76th year. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty proud of that and my family, um, with that kind of heritage and lineage. So I was just kind of born into it. My mom was also, she grew up in the dance studio, obviously. And, um, my dad, they met, they met at the dance studio, probably they were seven years old. They grew up together dancing. They competed, um, doing ballroom and really had a well-rounded training. What kind of style of dance were they doing? Yeah, they, they, which one thing I've really, which I would also, you know, I'll be mentioning throughout the interview because it's something I find so important is to have a well-rounded background. So they really did train in their technique and their ballet, of course, um, you know, as a foundation, but had a very broad training with acrobatics. And at the time was able to go into ballroom. They performed all over the world and did competitions. My aunt, my dad's sister is also a dancer. Um, and so anyway, fast forward to when I was born, they decided they wanted to pursue their careers in Los Angeles. Okay. And I was born in New Mexico. Three months later, we moved to um, California and they pursued their careers. They had very su successful careers as dancers and danced on um, shows such as the uh, Cal Burnett show for many years. Um, <laughs> I, the yeah, I mean, I hope Cal. people watching this will you know did. because she's, it was just, she's an did incredible woman. you get a chance to woman. meet her ever? <gasps> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I grew up, I grew up watching my parents. I was an only child at that time before my mom was remarried later, but I grew up you know, watching them in the back of classes and they would take at Roland Dupre's and, and they danced with 
everyone and during that time my aunt was also a dancer she danced on the Lawrence Welk show for many many years um so my dad my dad and mom danced during that time with you know everyone Sammy Davis Jr Dean Martin my mom was a Dean Martin dancer <laughs> so I didn't know at the time it was like you know something special right. I just thought something that was like just normal <laughs> like this is just every day That's yeah crazy. I just thought this is what everyone did I got to tour with them with Shirley MacLaine's act when, ah! they, when I was seven Are you <laughs> so, me? yeah so I mean you know I was seven years old and touring this is I thought not I was, in the bio I would have been ready for this what Oh, I thought I was a little adult. I knew the whole show. My mom will tell this story that I was ready. I was ready. Like if anyone was going to go out, I was going to go. I don't know. I saw myself like no one would notice if I went in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that show. I knew that show front to back. So I was just like waiting for my chance, you know, to. <laughs> so yeah, I grew up with them um, uh, backstage and watching shows tape and um yeah with so do you all, have all the documents so lucky. From, like the old vhs's like do you have all that information my mom has some she has um luckily she has albums of um of you know pictures the designer for the show for Coburnett show was bob mackie and then down the hall was the share show so he was designing for both shows and then he would design for the dancers and right uh do drawings and so she has even drawings from Bob Mackie and she has pictures with her with all the celebrities since it was a variety show so many celebrities came on each week so she has those pictures there's not a lot of tape she does have some but uh you can you know look it up a little bit on YouTube my, my dad also danced with many um acts such as Juliet Prowse and Bernadette Peters and Connie Stevens and all of those people. So he has a you know a little bit of footage here and there, but unfortunately it's not like now. <laughs> so there's the reruns as well. If you watch a Cal Burnett show, they do they don't show the dance numbers anymore, but they show the skits and the dancers were in the skits. So oh, thank you for sharing yeah. that. So anyway, I'm yeah, of course, so proud of my my parents <laughs> and so my mom. So I had to mention of you. Did they expect exactly what you're doing? Or did they want you to become a doctor and go to medical school? Like like, what did they know? In fact, when I was in LA, um, they did not, I, I, I just, I trained. So I knew how to dance, of course, from them watching them, mm -hmm. mimicking them, you know, all, all of that and like learning all of the steps. And I, I knew how to pretty much dance before I went into training, but then they just, they put me into a ballet school. And so I went into uh, a ballet school called Ballet La Jeunesse, and it was a pretty serious small ballet school <laughs> yeah. in um, in Toluca Lake. And Natalia Claire was the teacher, and she had I mean, we were so fortunate. I had no idea at the time, but she would bring in um, people from New York City Ballet, like Heather Watts, which was an amazing connection Dance, I, later. I remember these names. Dance yeah. To get every yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of yeah, a lot of those people from she had. Uh, connections with so she would bring in those people when they were setting some of the ballets with us so that's where I received my training and then I did not I, I didn't really have an interest I guess or I didn't express an interest to go into show business they didn't really push that and um, I remember right before I was going to be moving from California because my mom had the opportunity to take our studio over back in New Mexico when she was finishing her dance career um, I did say, oh, I want to go on some auditions and they got me an agent and I did go on a few auditions and I did a couple of little things, but I, you know, unless I expressed an interest, they were very supportive. They didn't push me either way. I just loved dancing and I, you know, I, I just love dancing. And so they put me into uh, training, which ballet, they knew ballet would be the best foundation. So. Okay. So uh, after like say high school, and now it's college time. Did you go into a professional ballet company? Did you pursue a degree? What did you do? Um, neither really. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting, but I, um, during high school, I had the opportunity to dance a lot. I did dance in a ballet company in New Mexico, um, like a local company, and they would bring in guest artists and things like that when I was um, younger. But, um, and I love school. I love school. I was a good student. I was an honor student. Actually, at the end of high school, I was awarded a presidential scholarship for the University of New Mexico um, and several other scholarships with, <laughs> thank you, with different um, 
schools, but I also was presented with the opportunity I had modeled, you know, locally through high school. And it was a hard choice because dance is in my heart. Dance was my love. Um, but I got very tall um, late, like at 16, 17. I was very, very small, kind of like Juliet got very tall. And so no one was directing me at the time. Like there's um, these choices. I was just like ballet trained. And then I started to take other classes through high school. Anyway, I wasn't directed like, you know, you could do go the modern route or go to be a rocket or, you know, these types of things. At that time, there were, there wasn't a lot of uh, opportunities for tall dancers. I'm 5'9". Five nine, I'm five nine. So um, anyway, I was modeling and I got some opportunities that way and everything kind of fell into place that my home agency had connections with um, in international competition in New York and I was exposed a little bit more that way. Um, and I came back and took my presidential scholarship because I was really torn, you know, which way should I go? And I love school. So I did do that for a couple of years. And then the model up, the modeling opportunities kept presenting themselves more and more. And I met someone that had an agency in Paris and I just decided to go for it. <laughs> wow. So I went for it. And, um, and so that's what I did in, instead of per, trying to pursue a dance career. Yeah. And so I actually went down. The dance really helped me. I used it a lot mm -hmm. in my um, runway, in my picture you know, in the, in the photo shoots um, in my career. But anyway, I ended up going to Europe and stayed there for a year. I modeled um, in Spain and Italy and Paris. And then I got kind of from there, it just one thing kind of led to another. I ended up going to Hawaii for a, a bit. Sorry. And <laughs> and then I'm going to Hawaii, yeah, and that was, Wait, you know, before tough. you even go to Hawaii, let's go back, because I have so many questions. Yeah, yeah, go back, go back. Five, nine, <laughs> ballerina in point shoes, you're six feet. So it's very yeah. hard, right, to find a male to partner and do all this. So is this one yes. of the reasons why you were like, okay, it's just too... I and mean, I, like, like I said, I got tall late. I mean, I literally was really short and small and I just had a growth spurt. I think it's just, you know, how that happens sometimes when you're exercising so much. And I, this didn't ha happen until I was almost 17. Right. So it's kind of like a surprise. And I was taking these ballet classes and I had some opportunities to audition for, um, you know, some, maybe it was like programs and things like that. And even, <laughs> even the, the teacher would say to me, have you tried modeling? <laughs> I mean, not, I don't think they were being mean, like you're not a good day. I think they were just saying, you know, you might want to check out your opportunities, you know? So, um, yeah. in a nice and way. I did have that. Yeah. In a nice way. And so, um, yeah, like I said, I didn't have, I, I didn't have a lot of direction at that time of, I didn't know what was out there besides ballet, you know? So, um, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, right. yeah, I'm Any sure questions? it's just too hard to find partners yeah. at that time. I have another question. Since yeah. dance has changed, these little, these tiny dancers, we should call them, yeah, like little phenoms now, right? Back in yes. my day, doing yes. like, don't laugh, Miss Krista, but doing like <laughs> four turns was like amazing. It was like, oh, oh my God, you're in the company. Please. Oh, yes. I know. Even doing a double turn right. or a triple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many turns? in your day were you doing that were like solid and you were like I am it I think if I could do four I was I thought I was every I thought I, <laughs> I thought I was something I had a couple days I had you know classes like that where I was doing four I was like whoa I am something right? we would not yeah. make today and like and I could do I mean when we were learning footage um, I remember that my grandmother talking about that was we I did train really seriously in ballet when I was younger so when I was on point and we were doing our footage on point you know I thought I was pretty pretty special but we weren't doing like you know right. what they're doing now the combinations and everything yeah uh, I just want just because I know students are going to watch and they're going to like why didn't she ask I want to know how many turns <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, believe me, no, it wasn't like, it wasn't 10, it wasn't 10. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. now I'm going to go back to the modeling, because you, you go so fast, I just ask so many questions. 
Okay, no, so you're okay. in Paris for a year. You're using your dance um, techniques with the walking. Did yeah. you find that you would have to train the other models to say, hey, on your toes? Did you find yourself in that teaching position? No, no. I just, you know, I just used it the best I could in my in my auditions to try to get the jobs. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was just wondering you know, if they made you like, yeah, I mean, you know, I was really, try I, I was really ambitious with it. I was really wanting to make it a career at that time was, you know, the supermodels were out there just starting like the um, Paulina and Linda Evangelista and all of, you know, the ones that were in like the George Michael videos, those were, they were just like a few years ahead of me. So here I'm going, you know, I want to make this a career. So anything I could do to get jobs that's definitely what i did <laughs> videos did you do any 80s videos um no i wasn't in really in those places i ended up going from paris um like i mentioned to hawaii i ended up getting um in hawaii at the time there were a lot of japanese clients coming and offering contracts i had an agency there you could go kind of go two ways you could be kind of like a hawaii calendar girl model or a like a catalog um you know, print model. And that's more, that's the route I did. Um, I was able to meet uh, the Japanese clients that came in and it was really where it was a good market for me. So at that time, it was just a great market. I was offered, you know, con kind of contract after contract at that time. And I was like, oh, okay, Japan's a really good market for me. So I'm going to go with, with this. And um, yeah, ended up modeling in um, Japan and Taiwan and Korea, um, all over Asia, and um, really finding a place in Japan. I worked for a lot of designers. Of course, I worked for um, like Chanel and Armani and Ferragamo and Hane Marie and probably every department store in Japan and did commercials, but I found that that was a great market and I ended up staying there almost five years actually. Wow. So you you can speak the language pretty much. How many languages? Uh, <laughs> Only a little bit. So um, conversationally I do okay, mm -hmm. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it was wonderful. Fond, fond, fond memories, fond memories of Japan. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I loved my time in Japan. I just really have Describe good memories of that. Describe what an apartment that. looks like. I kind of see them. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're small. Oh, you <laughs> you know, you get used to you get used to it. You get used to living in small spaces. But of course, it's like that in New York as well, you mm -hmm. know, so um, <laughs> but the ceilings are really low. So sometimes I, if I would put I would forget early in the morning, sometimes I would have to leave for a job and travel on the Shinkansen or travel on a plane. And I would put on my shoes and then it would make me taller. And I can't tell you how many times I would, I would like hit my head on walking out the door from our, our, our hallway. Oh, and I was like, oh no. So yeah, I would have, you know, small spaces, lower ceilings. Um, but I, you, a lot, it's very, it's a very um, social culture. So we met so many wonderful people and we still have um, those relationships and you end up hanging with people in uh, mm -hmm. meeting them for dinners or you know going to their houses or you know so it's it's very social and um it's a very wonderful culture I absolutely love my time there yay so you have such a wealth of information already we're not even 15 minutes into the show. <laughs> Wow, so you've oh, been backstage you. on television sets with Sammy Davis Jr. and, and Shirley Plain. <laughs> then you went to yeah. Paris with Chanel and, and all the Cocos. And then you went to Japan. <laughs> okay, yeah. my gosh. All right, so now modeling is over. How did you get back yeah. to dance? What, like, what happened that made you say, yeah. I you? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could have continued for me. Um, for me, modeling was kind of a vehicle or I really wanted to travel when I was younger. It was like, I wanted to go everywhere. I wanted to go to every place in the world. And so modeling kind of presented that as a way that I could travel younger. A lot of people, you know, will wait till they're older to travel, which is wonderful, but I've always kind of traveled and worked. Um, and so I loved it. I love my time modeling, but dance was always in my heart. And I thought, you know, I could continue coming back to the States. I was kind of ready to, um, I was still pretty young, but I was kind of ready to 
months to finish that and move on to the next chapter. So I came back actually to um, Albuquerque, to New Mexico and my family, they were, the studio was having its 50th year anniversary. And we always have a big recital every uh, other year. And it's, you know, a pretty big deal because the studio is fairly large. And um, so I came back for that. And being around it, just being around it and seeing the kids that I hadn't seen in years grow up and seeing how good they were. Mm -hmm. And then we, ha we had a small little competition team and we took a trip. I took a trip with my husband and my young daughter, my first daughter, Kira, and we went to New Orleans and saw the competition. And this is something like that was so new to me that I had grown up in, in conventions, but there weren't the competitions. So even at that time, there were only just a handful. There were just a handful of competitions, but it was the nationals. They, and I was like, wow, it was just so cool to see all of these kids dancing and all of these numbers and productions. And, you know, it was like a competition that we go to now, but it was something new, very new for me. So I just was like, I think this is what I want to do. I saw all the numbers and the choreography and I'm like, I want to teach these kids. I think I want to teach kids. We have a studio in New Mexico. I think this is the next thing. I, I never really thought that, um, I don't know. I didn't really think about it, that that's what I would do. But when I went there and saw the kids dancing in the car, I was like, I think this is what I want to do. I want to work with these kids mm -hmm. to get them to this level we only had a handful in our studio. It was more recreational and then we had a handful of really strong dancers. And I said, you know, I think I wanna do this and be part of this. Um, so that's how it started. Um, and we ended up staying. We were actually gonna move to Australia. My husband's Australian and we were gonna move there, but we ended up staying. Excuse and me. Kind of yeah, over the husband, like where did, he, <laughs> where did he fit in? Did you meet him at the competition? Like <laughs> he just appeared on chapter 12, I don't know. Well, remember I said, I said, I'm a wife at the beginning. Yes, but which one chronologically, it doesn't make like, where did he come from? I'm trying to. Draw yes. To the right, right, right. Well, yes, we did. We met in Tokyo, but he's, oh. he's Australian. <laughs> he's Australian. So I kind of, yeah, I'm sorry. Skipped over that in Japan, but uh, yeah. He's Pardon? A Is he a dancer as well? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. oh no, he took a tap class once and he said that that ruined his feet for his life. So I'm not sure I believe him on that, but that so anyway. hard. do you teach tap as well? Are you a tapper? Are you a hooper? No, I mean, no, I've taken, I've taken tap for years. I, I know how to tap. I right. can teach tap probably to a certain level, yeah, that's but it. I'm not, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm yeah. going to stay in my lane, you so know, you but I can tap, I can tap a bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, it's for the audience. So you were in Tokyo, you met him, he's from Australia, and you somehow yeah. convinced him to come to the States, you get married, yes. and now you're yep. back in Mexico. Okay, so now, okay. And now okay. I convinced him to stay in the desert. He's from the ocean. And mm -hmm. yeah, so he, he kind of saw the benefit too with my mom and the studio and the wonderful right. environment. And he we were ready, you know. Husbands yeah. have to be so supportive, we're as ardent oh as we are, yes. it's so important. So I'm yes. happy to hear that. You oh my goodness, that. yes, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we we did, we ended up staying. We thought we were gonna move back to Australia, but with it being, oh, it's just so far. And I knew I would hardly see my mom and um, my family. Mm -hmm. So we ended up staying um, and that lasted a long time, a couple of decades. So, um, so yeah, we, I don't know where I was in that, but I think just talking about starting and starting into um, what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And that really, I think, you know, for people watching too, um, you know, I think back to just, I was, a, I had a successful modeling career, but I knew dance wise, like I knew how to dance. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up dancing, but I didn't necessarily know how to teach. And that at that time, anyway, it was like, you don't just teach you train to teach mm -hmm. you know and I mean I'm not saying people don't do that now but it's a little bit different with um what's happening now in the dance world and coming off television and all of this kind of thing but um yeah so I actually put myself in a, a assisting position for about a year and a half two years with our teachers our teachers at our studio have been had that time even been teaching for decades. And so I just put myself in an assisting position and then slowly kind of worked into teaching um, 
kind of younger and lower levels. And I would teach in a, like a, an advanced jazz class or an advanced ballet class, I would teach like one or two, but I worked kind of my way into that. So probably for about five years or so, um, I did that. But within two years, I saw that there was really a need in our studio to kind of up the level. So what I did within about two years is start some, um, dance team programs. And I thought, you know, how are we gonna get, how are we gonna bridge our kids from being these dancers who are getting really good training, but what if they wanna pursue a career in dance? What if they wanna go to a college program? How are they gonna get there? How are they gonna be competitive enough? Um, so I started a dance team and that was within about two years of me coming there. And then within a few more years, it had become popular. And it was just like giving the kids uh, more hours, giving the kids more exposure to different styles, um, giving the kids opportunities to perform or to compete. And then that kind of branched out into those kids wanting to do solos and wanting to do duos. And we always had a very small team, but now it was growing. Um, and then it, after the, a few more years, I got a younger team because our, our existing team was teenagers in high school. So I started it with middle school kids and then I started it with elementary school kids. Um, and basically it was, it, you know, the idea was just around the training. How are we gonna get these kids more hours and more training and more exposure? And then, you know, the competition kind of, <laughs> kind of naturally happened out of that. Wow, so it was organic. It wasn't anything thought yes. and planned. That's the best way when you just do things yes. in the heart and you just have Yes, it. and then it how kind of you... snowballs. You see how it snowballs and then you, you know, you have to kind of figure right. out how you're going to go with that. Yeah. And then everybody, you look up and everyone's like, I want to be on the team. Now you have yeah. 20 people. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. I want to do a solo. I want to do a duo, okay. you know, so then, then you have to figure out what you're going to do. You have to figure out, are we going to do auditions? You know, you have to kind of roll with it and figure out how you're going to navigate name? all of that. What's the name of the school? Our school in New Mexico is called Fishback Studio of the Dance. It's a family name, my grandfather's name. Um, but yeah, it's been here. This is the 76th year. I can't believe it. They've made it through. And um, and many studio, many people have, you know, come through the studio and even started their own studios here in New Mexico, in the area or other places. And um, we have great relationships with them. You know, we try to do, do, you do keep like that. mentorship with them. Like, do you help each other? How does well, the men, yes, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing that my mom is very, very big on is, um, you know, keeping great relationships within the community. Um, that's a big thing that I learned from her is about, you know, how do you keep these long-term relationships working, working together, collaborating, um, ne never burning bridges, you know, that kind of thing. So I think we teach that within our studio and um, we do have a mentorship with the kids uh, growing up, which is called, they, assi they assist if when they wanna start assisting, even at a fairly young age, we, we have them do that with classes. And then a lot of them will assist all the way through high school. And then she'll let them start teaching maybe, you know, maybe like the last year or two, um, sometimes teaching a class here and there. So, but yeah, it's a great training ground. Juliet did that. My daughter from the time she was really little she learned you know learned how to do that and th I think that helped her learn how to teach as well so okay because one of the questions that I had for you was about teacher certification yeah so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ask and just throw it out there because you guys have all of that information within that one school have you ever thought of starting your own teacher certification program um, I actually haven't thought too much about it, but it would be a good, I, I, I have thought about putting something together um, after, you know, kind of training under my mother I'll for so many up. years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it would be, I was talking to another uh, dance teacher about this actually at finals. I just went to YGP finals and I was talking to another um, conservatory owner about creating a program for um, for adjudication for dance, you know, some, we, it would have to be brainstormed a lot, but yeah, I mean, a certification program would be great. I know a lot of schools have that, um, available and I mean, I'm 100% behind education, any which way, shape or form. Um, I'm 100%. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's a great, thank you, Dawn. That's a great yeah. idea. I'll put that's some thought, I'll put some thought into it. I'll you put some thought. Like yeah. I mean, Here's the thing, 
And when you're a genius, sometimes you don't realize you're a genius. And other people look at you <laughs> and they're like, do it, do it. And you're like, who, me? And we're like, yeah. I know. <laughs> That's how I am. Totally. I mean, not that I think I'm a genius at all. I'm just don't. like. But I've seen your no. work. All, everybody who's watching or who they know you, they. Oh, yes. Thank you so so much. I want to talk <laughs> about now judging. Oh, yeah. these competitions. Lord have mercy. How many do yes. you do? What is it all about? What do y'all look for? And go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I started doing uh, more teaching on conventions. I kind of um, resisted doing that for quite a while. I don't I don't know necessarily why, maybe because I was presenting so much work at different competitions, um, didn't want to have that conflict as much, but um, it's really something I've been enjoying, to be honest. I, ha I have been loving teaching at conventions and I teach on a couple of different ones that have, you know, one has more of like a ballroom setting with really a lot, all the different styles like hip hop and tap and uh, musical theater and um, it's incredible to be teaching with that kind of energy you know in the room where you have sometimes um, now I don't I don't teach on one that has like 400 people in the room I don't, I don't quite know how they do that or you know how that works but um, even for the kids but I do teach where you know maybe there's 80 people in the room or 60 to 100 and so it's for me it's like I'm learning a ton of how to um, even navigate the room and make sure the kids are getting the information and my teaching has, it was something I was kind of afraid of too. So I wanted to do it because I knew that it would push me and make me grow why as an artist. That? Well, why? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but I know that I think it's just, I'm afraid of something I hadn't done, like maybe teaching that many people at once in the room. It was just it was something Juliet. different. Isn't she your assistant? Blame it on Juliet. Tell it, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's funny, like the things you get scared of. But um, yeah, so I knew like I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, you know, and so I knew I've got to I've got to try to do this just so I can push myself out of my out of my comfort zone. Um, that and then I teach on another convention that's more um, concert based and we work in theaters and we work in classrooms still and give the kids class on theaters set set um like set a gala piece for um the kids before the weekend's over they learn it really quickly they come together and they dance and this of course we we were recording it this season because we weren't having live audiences or we had one live audience um but yeah i've i've enjoyed that so much i've enjoyed judging i really didn't realize how much i would like judging <laughs> some judges are probably thinking right now you're crazy but i i have i really i really have enjoyed it um okay, being part so of that and help it. other judges what is it okay this has to be you watch the same I don't want to say it's the same dance, but the same song has to come on at least three times mm -hmm. within the hour. How do you keep it fresh? What advice do you have for other judges out there? Um, yes, I mean, when you're judging long hours, anyone know it can be it can be tricky, you know, it can be difficult. I so far have been um, very fortunate to, I have to say, number one, I work with the what where who I choose to work for and who I choose to work with, which I'm fortunate to be able to do. Um, I am inspired by them. I'm inspired by the, the educators that I work with. So the people that I sit next to, I learn from them. Um, I also, when I judge, it's either like the written sheets um, or speaking live. So actually I work for a convention where we give live feedback when we give live feedback, it's like the kids come forward after they dance like an American Idol type oh, thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that has been, a, I've been able to keep it a lot more fresh yeah. that way yeah. because we're talking next to each other. I'm hearing what they're saying. I'm obviously not going to be repeat what they're saying, but I'm learning you know, something about maybe a different way to give feedback. And then I can kind of work off of that um, or I can give something completely different. And, but I would say the number one thing is to don't make, don't make it about you. 
for judges. Um, I feel like this can be a pitfall sometimes, especially when you are talking into a microphone, into a tape, and you have to talk the whole time. Right. I know from being on both sides of it, you know, every teacher knows about point your toes, like every, every teacher knows that. So they don't want to hear that, you know, they want to hear something that maybe in a different way or something that you can offer and maybe not changing choreography either. But I try to keep it, I, I try to be present. I try to get to give feedback on what's being presented at that moment. Um, and I try to keep it concise where I, I'm not giving them so much information that, um, you know, they're kind of, you know, when you're performing, the kids are already nervous and they're maybe not, you know, you have to give them something that they can work with. Um, so keeping it present, keeping it, giving feedback on what's being presented and um, not making it about myself. <laughs> Okay, great answer. Yeah. That's awesome. I have two more in that same category. Okay. Advice for teachers and staging, and then advice for the dancers. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a few things to say to the dancers. What, what do you mean advice for teachers and staging? Well, for teachers watching this, and you are a master judge, what hmm. advice would you give them in terms of staging that might help their presentation? Oh, okay. You know, oh, you like when I'm watching their numbers yeah. and the feedback. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I've seen this season and also as adjudicators, we don't know the situation, especially this year. We, we were just so happy to see the kids on stage and we, we saw how happy they were to be able to get out on stage that of course there was leeway given with feedback um so i mean it depends if you're doing what style and what genre and but i'll just speak in general to um i'll just speak in general to group numbers or something like that okay. um what i think is important is more what I'd like to get across <laughs> and please beg them for, to understand that, I mean, I'm a, te I'm a technician, really. I teach a lot, I, I really love technique. I teach that, but what's more important for these kids is, is telling a story. So when I see teachers or coaches who cave to, um, thinking that you have to put certain skills in. So this is something we say over and over and over is we see solos, we see duets, we see, and then all of a sudden, you know, there comes to be five turn combinations or there's Alice Cone turns, skills that you have not mastered yet. And I'm not talking about mastered at a professional level. I'm just talking about mastered at whatever level they are at. Please, I'm begging you, please don't put them in <laughs> on stage. Please um, think what's more important is if you can guide the children or your students in, um, in telling a story with the piece, it could just be a simple walk across the stage. It could be a look, um, but you are doing them much more of a service if you can teach them to work on the performance, the commitment, the telling of a story, the motivation. If you're dancing to a song that has lyrics and you might wanna to listen to those lyrics or if you're dancing to spoken word, you will have the kids even come, you know, study those or come up with their own stories. I work with kids and I have them change their stories all year, but I have them do it, not me. But you have to be like, if you're dancing to, supposed to be dancing with someone or it's in the story, then that should come across. So I would just really it, um, urge you, if the kids have not mastered certain skills, please don't put them on stage. And it's not necessary. Number two, if you've already shown me something and you do it again, you need to show me it in a different way. So if it's the it could be the same skill or it could be a double a or it could be a pirouette, but there's no need to, to do things twice if it's going to be exactly the same and there's no, there's no reason for it. So I would say focus more on the storytelling Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Top three, <laughs> top three um, dance competitions that you would recommend. Um, give me ballet and then contemporary and then theater and then conventions. Just in case anyone wants to know mm. where they can find you, like where do you go? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a really difficult question because I even see, um, I'm in, you know, a few dance, dance teacher networks and talking with different dance teachers and they are recommending competitions that I've never heard of. So sometimes they're regional, you know, there's more competitions that go on the East coast or more to the Midwest and more on the West coast. And so I don't, you know, I think it depends on your skill level, what your goals are. Um, some people just really want to get to enjoy dance. And I think that's the most important thing that we should be doing, you know, for young dancers is to help them to develop their love of dance. Um, for me, that's the most important thing. I would always recommend a convention, a competition that has a convention attached because that's where you're going to learn more um, and you're able to take class from different people. Um, I would say, I mean, I would recommend not to do them make that your life, but if you're able to do a few and then bring it back to your home teachers and um, you're, you have ins you're inspired, you have learned a few different things, have heard things a different way, I would always recommend some uh, convention and a competition together. But if you know you are wanting to get out on stage, stage time is never a bad thing either. So there are you know kind of elite competitions that we all know of that the kids you know they're going and there could be several hundred kids in a room. Um, there's com there's conventions that are much smaller and more boutique conventions. There's conventions that have different tiers and levels of dance, and that gives every dancer an opportunity. So I think it really depends on what your goals are for the future. Um, I teach on two conventions. One is called uh, Fluid Dance and it's more of a boutique convention. That's the one with the live feedback and they have a lot of different styles of dance. I teach on, yeah, yeah. And I teach on Icon Dance Awards, which is amazing experience as well. But see, you can't just say, tell the people who don't know about, like, I, like that's like the biggest convention. So just talk a little bit about Icon Dance. <laughs> It's so well, it's fairly, it's actually fairly new, but it's, um, it's more, it's actually more of a ballet based concert um, convention, and I'm really proud of the work we've done with it. Um, and the director, you Addison. You did something with that recently? I don't mean to keep, <laughs> you won like what? an award, like a choreography award or something for that, right? Um, so modest. I don't. <laughs> Well, I, yeah. oh, it's so hard talking about myself. Though. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, that's why I like to see the kids on the stage, not me. <laughs> um, no, I, I did win a choreography. I won my second um, YGP choreography award this this year, which I'm very grateful for. So thank you, YGP. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I, I teach icons fairly new and and but it's concert based. It's uh, ballet, musical theater and contemporary and amazing faculties on both of the conventions I teach for. I'm very proud to teach on both of them. Um, they don't go all over the country. So again, I would love to see um, you all there. But if you can just get yourself out to conventions um, and, you know, absorb what you're learning, I think that's, I would always recommend uh, any anywhere you can learn and have an education. And going back to um, one thing, I'm just kind of going to skip back to the, the certification thing, because I think that just to mention that, um, I'm like I said, I'm all for education any way we can deepen and broaden that. But once the cert the the certificate, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a high skill level. So I think it's wonderful to have those. I think that anything you can do um, that way to to gain um, knowledge and, and and education, but it's important to keep learning and it's important to deepen and broaden our education and having that might open the door, but it's it's very important to continue um, education so you, we can broaden our skills. Thank you. So let's stay yeah. on the skill set talk and let's talk about technique. And um, what is it that yeah. you look for? Um, let's, let's do ballet. Like, mm -hmm. what is it that you look at to say, and it could be the simplest thing. Mm -hmm. This person has excellent training because yep. what is it? The smallest thing, what is it that yeah. you see? Well, when I'm, okay, when I'm adjudicating and especially sometimes I know, you know, ballet isn't kids' main focus, um, which I think is 
more important that you have a broad background, that you have a broad background, but you have to kind of focus in. But for me, where I see it the most is in the footwork. That's where I see it. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. <laughs> my feet, yeah. I'm like this on those feet. Oh, you, are you the same? Are you the same? Oh my God. I look at the, the first thing and it's so funny. It's like they up here doing yep. all this. And I'm yep. like, what is that bottom yep. leg doing? Yep. So, I yeah. I can tell, you know, I can tell if they've been doing, you know, doing the slow. I mean, I can tell. And again, it's um it doesn't mean you have to necessarily have the best feet, you know, the best feet or anything. It's um it's the attention. It's the attention to detail. And are we just I can tell if they're just running things and rehearsing or if they're putting in the work and there's no, there's no getting around. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. cliche because it sounds cliche because it is, I mean, there's just no getting around practice, practice, practice is the access, practice is the ac access, it's the access to ma mastery. So if you're not putting in the work, you're not putting in the time, you're just running things over and over and over, you can always tell and so when something's a little more technical when a piece comes up and I'm judging and it's a, a bit more technical yeah I mean you know of course you can see if they're activating from their their back and their you know their thoracic and all of that kind of stuff too but you can work on that the feet really need <laughs> the feet really need that attention to detail people, yeah. your feet work that turnout so what yeah. tips would you give a student um to help with their, maybe let's just do two things. You could pick what yeah. you want to give, any tips on their Okay. Um, yeah, so another, when I'm, so just going back to what I'm seeing, cause I'm, I'm seeing hundreds and thousands of kids across the country and things to work on. So one of those we've mentioned, we mentioned the footwork and I think there's just no getting around getting in those ballet classes and working that slowly. I think you have to put in the extra work. It's like school. I tell my kids that I'm working with, um, you know, you go to school and you do homework, there's homework to do. So you're going to have uh, more of an edge. You, you have to put in the extra work. So working the feet, um, you could even just be doing something as simple as strengthening, spending 20 minutes a day, um, even if you can't do it every day, but I'm like, you guys can find 15 or 20 minutes. So, you know, doing releves, doing strength work, um, balancing in different positions. I think what people working on their core um, continually is very important. And us as teachers, how do we find ways to relate? If they don't understand it, we have to find ways that they can understand how to engage those muscles. Because I was brought up in a time where people just said, turn out, turn out, turn out. And we were just expected to turn out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, we also didn't have all the distractions. I think you, there, an argument could be made for distraction versus engagement now. And how do we find ways that the kids can be engaged, right? But at the time, we still had our distractions, but we didn't have all of the same distractions. Things weren't coming at us at the same speed that they're coming at the kids now. So I think we have to understand that and set our rules and our boundaries and our expectations but we also it's our job as teachers to figure out how to um, engage the student so how do we help them to to feel that and find that core rather than saying use your core how do we get that information across how do we help a young dancer feel that we have to figure out ways to do that same with turnout when you're using the backs of your legs and your hamstrings and your inner thighs and rotating and um, you're connecting it into your core, how do we how do we relay that information? How do we help them to feel that rather than just say turn out? So anything, of course, we can talk about that all day and using those exercise, you know, doing exercises, floor bar, Pilates, um, balancing exercises, court. we can talk about how to do that. But I think more importantly, um, I mean, those exercises, I think more importantly is like finding the ways for the kids to understand it and feel it. And also to ex have an expectation for them to um, focus, you know, it's such as like when you, when you're sitting, sit, right. When you are dancing, dance. And that's something I expect in my class. I mean, I, I love, to have fun as well. But when, when kids are in my class, I expect them to dance. I expect them to work. I expect their focus. 
Um, so if we're working on something, do just do that. I mean, it's kind of simple in that way if you can get it across. Not easy, mm -hmm. but it's kind of simple. It's not easy, right? <laughs> but but it's I'm sorry, I had a little fly going across. Mm -hmm. But it's um, but it's simple. It's like um, I don't know. I'll use another example, maybe in sports, like basketball is simple it can be a simple game but if you play if you played it with kobe or you play with lebron it's not it's not easy right right it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy so i think it's the same with, i think it's the same with dance a pilates class or a yoga class or another class that helps to build strength elsewhere too. yeah i mean of course all of that cross training all of that all of that cross training is yeah, is very important mm -hmm. Um, those are, we have so much out there now, bands, um, mm -hmm. you know, PBT, progressing ballet technique, if you find a really good teacher, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you're, you're having an instructor that's teaching correctly. Mm -hmm. um, Pilates, yoga, mm -hmm. um, gyro, um, all, you know, all of that stuff, even learning your uh, terminology and educating yourself. Um, but mindset, I guess I, I'm kind of going back to is getting um, is is the focus and the mindset and being present and seeing it as it's, it's simple, but it's not easy because you have to do the work and there's no getting around you have to practice it. If you want to get strong, a, a strong core, you have to continue to practice it. You will never go into a ballet class and not do plies and tendus. Right. It doesn't matter if you're 100 years old. So I mean, it's the practice practice is the access so i think yeah we can talk about how to do it and and cross training and all of that stuff is amazing and so many kids are doing it now mm -hmm. but the ones who are having the edge and being successful are the ones who are are practicing it every day thank you yeah okay are you ready to segue into your brain choreography um, time <laughs> choreography oh time. man <laughs> okay here's what i want to know i want to know do mm -hmm. you like do you think of something and then create movement? Do you hear something create movement? Or do you, don't think I'm weird, but do you think of numbers and then create movement? Like, what is it that- I know, I know choreographers that do that and I'm fascinated. I'm so fascinated by that. I actually know <laughs> Yeah, I know choreographers who, you know, have everything laid out and the numbers, but their brain works like that. Their brain works like an engineer, you know, and they have actually studied that. So I'm always just in awe of that. Um, I mean, occasionally, occasionally I'll have to map something out if I have to set something quickly on, let's say, a big group or a big production, um, I would have to map it out. But mostly, I think I hear something or see something, I think my brain works that way more. I actually keep, um, when I hear music, I will find out what it is, whether I'm shazamming it or whether I'm um, searching it and researching it. And I, I just kind of, I keep libraries of music and it doesn't mean I use it. I might not use it even for years, but I'll, when I have the opportunity to work with a group of kids or with a soloist, I will save that music and it's usually that I will get inspired. I mean, I was lucky to grow up in a very artistic family. My parents were dancers. My stepdad's a world-class jazz, jazz musician. Um, I grew up around music. I grew up around art. Um, I was exposed to that and to those conversations and that's just was my world. So um, I think if I see sometimes a color, a shape, a picture, um, sometimes I've done that where I create, I'm like, oh, that shape or something, it inspires me and I want to create it. But usually I would say it's, usually I would say it's music. And when I hear that music, I don't necessarily use it, but I'll save it. I'll go back through. And, and when I do work with people, I'll be like, hmm, I'll go back through and I'll listen and I'll be like, oh, that's, that's perfect for them when I'm creating a solo. Um, or sometimes I'll search, I won't have anything and, you know, and I'll have like thousands of piece, pieces of music and I won't like it. So I'll have to, I'll have to create it. Um, as far as choreography goes, honestly, I mean, I, I hate to disappoint you, but I kind of, I kind of just, I create it as I go. I cannot plan too much. I have to be honest. I cannot, 
I cannot plan too much. Choreograph. So let's say the dance is has to be a minute, two two minutes. Do you mm -hmm. do five minutes and then start cutting or like? I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I have, I do that sometimes yeah. if I have, if yeah. I have the chance to have the time, sometimes I don't have a lot of time. I, I always try to, I always try to ask. I'm not someone who really enjoys working with, like working with someone one time and setting in an hour and leaving. I'm just, I'm not that person. I'd rather spend a little bit more time with them. I usually ask if I'm going to work with someone, I usually ask them to send me a video ahead. I usually try to talk to them. Um, and see if they have any even idea of what they like the direction they want to go. Let's say if I'm setting a solo, if I have to set something like a big group, if I go into a cons conservatory and work and I have to set something like that, mm -hmm. I definitely have to have more of a plan. I've got to have the music picked out. I've got to know how many kids there are. But what I try to do is build in enough time where I can work with them maybe like an hour, give them some progressions, and I can see what I what I'm working with here. If it's men and you know boys and girls and what I'm working with with their skill level and where they would be best suited and then I'll have kind of a framework planned out of the piece within that I I'll probably have a few steps in each section and then I build on that because I really honestly like to see what arises in the space um, when I'm working with a soloist I try to ask for at least two sessions with them so that we can work and I can come back the next time you do Wow. Um, well, if I mean, I'm saying if if I go somewhere and I'm choreographing quickly, then I'll do that. And then I usually will get to work with them again, either on Zoom or I'll get back with them when I'm working with kids. If I'm if I have the luxury to work with them, I get to work with them over time and we we get to really evolve, evolve the piece, of course. But yeah, that's kind of like for setting it quick. And then I love to evolve it. But even with classes, I mean, I'll pick music that will really excite me or inspire me I'll be in you know kind of a sad mood or sometimes I'm just like in a jazz mood and I have training in all styles so sometimes I want to do something fun and more like mm -hmm. um, jazz funk and sometimes more emotional um, so I'll pick that and I'll kind of lay out some steps but honestly most of the time I'm kind of creating as I go because I, I love to I love to work with people and see what arises and also see how they can um, what they what they do with it. I might look over and I'll see how they're interpreting a step and I'll go, oh, I like that better, you know. So yeah. just in case there's a parent or a student watching that has interest in asking you to create a piece for mm -hmm. them. The ranges from your low range to the highest range, like where are you at this point? So like solos and you mean like who like who I work with? No, or, like if they need to pay you. <laughs> can they afford you? What is the yes. list of right? They can afford. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm not I I I'm not that person either where just because I've gotten a few awards, I'm gonna all of a sudden charge you know, so much money. No, I, I think I'm like, well, <laughs> like yeah, I think, you know, no, I'm like, I try to be workable. I like to collaborate. I work, I talk to people. And again, I like to more, it's more about who I'm working with. It's mm -hmm. not about, um, yeah, it's not about that. It's not about that for me. So even it's affordable. They can approach you, and they can. They can approach. They can approach me. <laughs> they can approach me. Yeah, I, I, I'm not that person. That's yeah, awesome. it's yeah. I try to be workable. I try to even if I'm going to teach. Time. So. I don't know how you have the time. <laughs> seriously, tell everyone you work at like 80 different schools, and then you do your like. Tell me about well, I'm based, I'm based in Arizona right now at Master Ballet Academy, and I've been there for, yeah, they've been awesome, and I've been there for several years based um, in, in Scottsdale, and I teach there a few days a week. When, I'm, when I happen to be there over the full week, I get to, you know, do more private lessons and work with the kids more, but I, it does leave me time, too. They've been very flexible and wonderful, and the kids there have been so you know, amazing to work with and to set work on um, and working with kids at, at a high level that are serious and train, um, you know, train in, in ballet so seriously <laughs> and every, you know, so many hours and things. So, um, so it's been wonderful to be, to give them that addition to, um, you know, working with them in ballet as well as contemporary and 
um, neoclassical and jazz, et cetera, and kind of having that freedom to, to create. And um, I, I just, you know, I've been able to have quite a bit of freedom there. So, and then have days free where I can travel. So actually I've been traveling most, most every weekend. I don't know, I might've been in like 20 or 30 states this spring, but that's okay. <laughs> You it's been it. a bless. It's, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing, and it's been um, really exciting to meet people all over and to create those relationships, those long relationships. And um, yeah, so it's it's been really exciting. Okay, before I let you go, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to talk about parents. Don't kill me. Slash okay. dance coaches. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What advice can we give to the parents who want to dance, be the dance coach as well? Oh, yes. Ooh. You know, we have to do this. <laughs> yes. This is a, yeah, touchy subject. Um, yeah, I, it's, that's a tough one to get across to them, um, to, put trust, you know, trust in the, in the teachers that you, um, that you put your kids, you have, of course, you have to be careful about the, the people that you're putting your kids in their hands. Um, sometimes it's not a fit. Sometimes it takes a year or two to even find that out. Um, but I would suggest that you keep the communication lines open. If you have any questions, I think the teachers and the coaches are, for the most part in general are really on the kids side they're for the kids they work hard they really want the best for the kids i mean i think almost all of the time um and i think to tr really trust trust them more i know it's hard especially this you know when you can't see what they're doing all the time and mm -hmm. maybe they had more access to be able to see that um but nine times out of ten when the parents do get too involved in that way. Um, and that I've had, there's always exceptions to the world. There's always exceptions where it's kind of benefited the kids if the parents have some experience and they're working, but you have to be working alongside the coach. If you have questions, but if you're contradicting the coach, if you are um, trying to, you know, rehearse them too much or train or change things, I think what's more important is keeping the lines of communication. So if you have any questions, about that, um, then you should talk to the coaches and find it, find out, you know, if you have any concerns or questions. I think coaches are always willing to find the time to talk about it. Um, and I think nine times out of 10, the, if the parents put more trust into the coaches and into the teachers, it's better. It doesn't make the kids confused. It doesn't make the kids, I mean, the kids are generally happier. They're not um, there's less drama. They're not mm -hmm. as upset. I mean, kids are going to go through their ups and downs and have their bad days. And they're going to come out of class sometimes and be upset. And they're going to have their problems with their friends, um, their little dramas and mm -hmm. like that. But if you can just take a step back as a parent and not try to fix it right away, you know, nine times out of 10, or even I would go as far to say 10 times out of 10, it does, re it resolves itself without that being without that being necessary and then occasionally it's you know necessary to step in or to raise concerns or questions but i understand with parents wanting to step in and protect but i i think it's um yeah it's more beneficial if you can just kind of take a deep breath <laughs> Thank yes you so much for that I, in their defense though a lot of times parents can't afford because dance coaches can be expensive to like have them travel back and forth. Oh, and absolutely. Back. So I yes, get um, I get it too. And I don't want I don't want the parents to take that in the wrong way if they're watching this. Of like, um, I'm not saying that you have to do a million private do a do a million privates and you have to pay you know, do all of that. And sometimes it's really beneficial when the kids get to just run, you know, run their pieces and they work on it. Um, I'm more saying if it's it's going in contradiction to the teacher yes. or you're or or you're it's stepping in too up. much with with little problems that the kids have just normal normal things in class so yeah 
You are amazing. Okay, so I think we went through everything. I asked you everything from the rooter to the tutor. So what, what's did. next for you? What's going on with Miss Krista now? Oh my goodness. Well, um, I am gonna go back to Phoenix. We're having our um, our spring show this week. And so that'll be exciting. The kids get to get on stage because they didn't get to do their Nutcracker um, mm -hmm. this year. So that'll be exciting. They're putting together a ballet. Um, and then, you know, there's all of the other dances. And then after that, I'll have a few days off. And then I actually go into this crazy summer that um, I'm very blessed to be um, booked all summer, uh, but it's just gonna, it's gonna be crazy. It starts off with, um, going to, uh, I'll just name a few, but I'm going to Utah and Virginia and Florida, back to Phoenix, Vail. Um, now what part of Florida? Can you Miami? Oh you? yeah, maybe I can see. Um, it's going to be Boca. Boca oh, that's far from me. Okay. Is but... it? Oh yeah. Cause Florida is so big. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm booked all the way through kind of mi uh, mid to end, uh, end of August. And I just, was very fortunate to, um, you know, have all this work come through, get to do some choreography. So that's what's coming up, you know, right away. And then beyond that, um, I will keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not quite have, sure. Yeah. You have to bring yeah. us back when you talk about your own teacher certification, which I am going to. Oh my gosh. That's, you, put a, you put a little bag in my ear. That's actually yeah, a really I cool. Ask you on the internet. If anyone wants That's to really contact cool. you, how do they contact you, Ms. Krista? Um, you could email me. It's thedancecoach at gmail. So T-H-E dancecoach at gmail.com. And then my Instagram, uh, you can always contact me there and DM me there. It's at Miss Krista King Doe, D-O-H at the end. So um, yeah, at Miss Krista King Doe. And I just want to say dancer or uh, to you, thank you so, so, so much. The dancers, the parents, anyone watching um thank you for watching <laughs> i know i'm, prob I'm probably a little awkward but anyway i love you i love you and i love you all and i i hope we can um keep moving this dance um community forward i actually really like the way it's going and um i'm super excited to see what's going to happen in the next decade and dancers you know, keep keep working hard and um i am all for seeing more women in dance. So I'm excited. Let's keep weeding out. Um, I don't want to get, I don't want to bring it down, but let's keep, let's keep weeding out the people in power who, you know, shouldn't, who are perpetuating oh. not great things. And um, mm -hmm. let's keep moving. Let's keep moving it forward and keep women need to be you know, seen more in dance, they're the backbone of dance. And we all love to see ma male dancers, of course. And, mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm really excited about seeing more women in dance and more women choreographer, choreographers where they should be, more women in those positions. And to the dancers, I wanna say, um, you know, keep, keep open, keep uh, really humbling yourself. It doesn't mean even being or doing, it's just, humbling yourself to new ideas and to um, people that you can learn from. You never know even the person next to you in class who mm -hmm. um, you can learn something from. So um, stay open, keep humbling yourself to new ideas and people and um, keep those relationships, relationships going in that collaboration. And I'm excited to see what you all are gonna do. <laughs> Oh, thank so you, Don. Thank you so much, Miss Krista. Love thank you. you so much. Thank you for watching, guys. <laughs> Remember the dance coach at Gmail? Yep. Mm -hmm. Gmail.com. Right. She's looking forward to it. She'll do your solo. <laughs> thank you so <laughs> You're much. You're promising for me. Thank, thank you, Don. Tell your husband thank you for supporting you. That means so much to us other women. I absolutely will. I absolutely will. And I can't wait to see you in person someday soon. Yay! I'm coming to Boca. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you.